we're going to spend um, quite a bit of time focusing on angles. So if you do not already have these definitions written down, go ahead and pause this video and then um, hit play again when you're ready to continue. So an angle is simply a figure formed by two rays sharing a starting point. A line is actually a straight angle continuing in both directions. A line segment is part of a line bound by two points and a ray is part of a line with one end points. So we're going to draw examples of each and we'll be sure to label. So an angle is just two rays that share a starting point. So the starting point is also called the vertex. And then since the rays continue on, you need to make sure you have arrows on the end. And then this is how we name an angle. The vertex has a letter and then each ray also has a letter. So you would call this ray, ray AB, and this one would be BC. We're not labeling the rays right now, but I wanted to show you that anyway. And this entire thing would be called angle A, B, C. Next, we're gonna draw a line. So a line is just a straight angle that continues in both directions infinitely. And it is also named with two points. And in this case, we'll say this is JK. And you will write it with a line over top, make sure you have the arrows on the end, and then JK. A line segment might look like a line, except for there will be points on each end because it does not continue infinitely. So this is why it's really important whenever you do have a line or a ray or an angle that you include those arrows on the end. So we will call this one MN and you write it as MN with a line over top with no arrows. And then you have a ray, which is a line segment. So it has both a point on one end and it continues infinitely in the other direction. And it all is also named with two points. We'll call this one XY. And it is written as XY with a ray over top. Now these bottom two, I'm unable to show you actually here on the iPad how to use the protractor because I can't set it up on top. But um, I'll give you, go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to measure each angle on your own. And then when you're ready, come back and hit play so you can check to see if you're correct. So this angle here measures to be 30 degrees, while this one is 140 degrees. Now let's look really quickly at the protractor. Um, you just used it above, but I wanna make sure you understand everything. So you have the center, which is right here. This is where you line up um, the vertex of the angle. And then you have this bottom line. It continues on this side over here, and then it's also on this side. And the side that you use, so your bottom line of your angle would line up here, depends on which way your angle opens. If your angle opens from the left, then you will use this outside scale. So we will call, I'll color this one in green. So you use the outside scale if your angle opens from the left. And opens from the left means it is shaped like this. If your angle opens from the right, then you will line up your protractor using the blue line, and then you will use the interior scale when you are measuring. So you'll use this scale. And also you know that um, acute angles are smaller, so if you measure an angle this size over here, and you happen to get a large measurement, like 130 degrees, that should be a hint that you need to stop and maybe relook at your measurement. So now that we've had that look at the protractor, we're gonna go down and talk about actual angle relationships. So angle relationships, um, we're gonna discuss a couple of different kinds of angles. So the adjacent angles, they are two angles that share a side and a vertex. So this basically means that they are right next to each other. They share the side and a vertex. Complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. 
And a way to remember this is to say that to give a compliment is the right thing to do. And 90 degrees is a right angle, so complementary angles have a sum that adds up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So these two angles make a straight line. You have vertical angles. They are angles that are opposite from one another. When two lines cross. They share a vertex only. So they do not share a side. And we'll go over actual visual examples of um, all of these in a little bit. Parallel lines are two lines in the same plane that do not intersect. And perpendicular lines are also two lines in the same plane, but they do intersect and they do so at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so down here, it says in the box below, use a ruler to create a street map that uses only perpendicular and parallel lines. Label each line. So I'm going to leave this for you to do, but you need to only pay attention to the perpendicular and parallel lines. So definitely you will need a ruler or just a protractor because you can use the bottom of it to make your straight lines. And you definitely need the protractor because you have to measure out those 90 degree angles. Let's look at unknown angles. So this says that lines DE, and I'll highlight these for you, lines DE and lines HN are parallel. If you know the measurement of any angle in the diagram to the right, how could you find the measurement of any other angle? So you're gonna think about this and discuss with your neighbor or just yourself if you're by yourself. Um, and then you're going to use your knowledge of angle relationships. So what I didn't cover up here is that, um, I'll write it in a different color so you can see, adjacent angles, they don't have a relationship in terms of what their sum is because adjacent angles don't have to be complementary or supplementary. Complementary and supplementary angles are adjacent, but adjacent ones don't have to be complementary and supplementary. Vertical angles right here, they are equivalent. So vertical angles will have the same measurement. So let's scroll back down to these unknown angles notes. So we're going to say, look up here, if the measure of angle five, which is right here, and the diagram is 60 degrees, then explain how you can find the measurement of angle 12. Well, angles 12 and 60 are on opposite sides of what's called a transversal, this line that runs through the middle. And you know that DE and HN are parallel, so that means this line slices right through the middle. So whatever is on one side, so I'll show you in a little bit simpler drawing. So whatever angle is here and here, they're equivalent. Also equivalent to them are these because they are in the same location just on different lines. So by looking at this above, if angle 5 is 60 degrees, then that means angle 12 is also 60 degrees. And knowing what we know, how could we find the measure of angle 1? Okay, so we know this is 60 and we know this is 60. So angles 12 and 13 together are they form a straight line, so that means that they are supplementary, so they have a sum of 180 degrees. 
if angle 12 is 160, then angle 13 is 120 because 60 and 120 equal 180. So you also then know that one and six together equal 120 degrees because they're on the opposite side here of this um, transversal. So you know that um, one, five, and six form a straight line, but we can't figure out the measure of angle one without knowing the measure of angle six. So we can write here that we know angle one and angle six have a sum of 120 degrees. We need to know the measure of angle six. So we can't actually, as is, figure out the measure of angle one, but that's how we would do it. Okay, so to find missing angle measurements, you need to remember the following. The measurement of a straight line is 180 degrees. The sum of complementary angles is 90 degrees. The sum of supplementary angles is 180 degrees. You also need to know that the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. And angles that are formed when a parallel line crosses a transversal, when parallel lines, excuse me, are cross a transversal are congruent, which means equal, if they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Let's continue with unknown angles. Um, unknown angles and triangles. So the sum of the interior ang angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And then an equation to represent the sum of the interior angles would simply be angle one plus angle two plus angle three equals 180. So an example says that a right triangle has a 35 degree angle. Find the measure of the missing angle. So the first is a right triangle. So we know that's 90. We are told that the second angle is 35, and we are trying to find that last angle. Together, they have to equal 180 degrees. 90 plus 135 is 125. We subtract the 125 from each side because we want x, and x is 55 degrees. A triangle has two 50 degree angles. What is the measure of the third angle? You can also do this by subtraction. So you know all three angles have to have a sum of 180 degrees. You have two 50 degree angles. So using the order of operations, we'll multiply first. Two times 50 is 100. 180 minus 100 is 80 degrees. Unknown angles in a quadrilateral. So the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. An equation to represent the sum of the interior angles would be just like what we did above, except that there's four angles this time. So angles one, two, three, and four added up equal 360. A parallelogram has two 40 degree angles. Find the measure of the missing angles. Well, you know from your exploration of shapes that a parallelogram has two sets of congruent angles. So you'll have two 40 degree angles and also two unknown angles that are the same and the to total is 360 degrees. So this is just a two-step equation that we'll solve. So we'll bring our 2x in front. 2 times 40 is 80 equals 360. You'll subtract your 80 from each side. You'll be left with 2x equals 280. You'll divide by 2 and x is equal to 140 degrees. Okay, so a trapezoid has two 35 degree angles and a 100 degree angle. What is the measurement of the fourth? So we'll do 360 minus those two 35 degree angles minus 100, 360 minus 70 minus 100, and I'm running out of room, so we'll just sit, um, go to the answer being 190. Now, that is the correct answer to this question. However, think about 100, what a 190 degree angle would look like. This would actually be larger than a straight line. So it would open up past a straight line. 
So in this case, you need to think if that's a reasonable answer, if that would be an actual true figure. And um, it wouldn't, but this still takes you through the steps of um, finding out what that angle would be. Okay, unknown angles in polygons. So you know that triangles have 180 degrees sum, quadrilaterals have a 360 degree sum. So let's see, how can we figure out the sum of the interior angles and shapes that have more than four sides? So the first thing you do is you divide each shape into triangles. And the way you do that is you pick any vertex on the shape and then you draw a straight line to every other vertex that you can draw a straight line to. In this case, I was able to draw three lines, which means this shape has four triangles. Over here with this pentagon, I'm only able to draw two lines. So a pentagon has three interior triangles. So if you look, you should notice that the number of triangles compared to the number of sides, well, there are two less triangles than number of sides. So we're going to say the number of sides minus two is equal to the number of triangles. Now, why is this important? Why are we trying to figure out how many triangles are in a shape? Well, this is why. The sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So you calculate the sum of the interior angles in each shape above the, these shown up here by multiplying the number of triangles by 180. So if a hexagon has four triangles inside, then that means the sum of the interior angles is 180 times four, which is 720 degrees. A pentagon has five sides, but only three interior angles. So we'll do 180 times three. And the sum of the angles in a pentagon will be 540 degrees. So there's actually an equation for this. So to determine, to determine the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, you're going to use the equation n minus two times 180. And that's gonna be equal to x, where n is the number of sides. So let's look at this table down here. So again, we're gonna use the equation n minus two times 180. So in this case, your sum of your interior angles, you're gonna do seven minus two, which is five times 180, and that's 900 degrees. Eight minus two, we'll have six times 180, and the sum of the interior angles here is 1,080 degrees. Here we will multiply eight times 180 for a sum of 1,440 degrees, for 12, we do 10 times 180 for a sum of 1,800 degrees. And then 15, I just skipped a little bit here just so you didn't get too used to the pattern, times 180 is equal to 2,340 interior, the sum of the interior angles. So this is everything you need to know about angles for this unit and Make sure if there's anything that you need to hear again, just simply rewind this video a little bit and pick up where you need the extra help.